My name is Sunil and I am a lecturer at a college near a village. There is no one in my family since my father passed away before I was born, and my mother passed away due to illness two years ago. Since childhood, I have had a feminine body type with small due to a condition called gynecomastia, which is enlargement in men. Because of this, all the boys used to tease me, and I always stayed at home to help my mother with household chores. I had to wear under my shirt to support my as soon as I reached puberty, and my mother told me it was necessary for me to wear. Dot. At first, I reluctantly agreed, but later, I started enjoying it. When I was 14, I even started wearing my mother's saris, at first in secret, but my mother caught me once and liked the way I looked. She encouraged me to wear saris whenever I was at home and even suggested that I grow my hair, which I happily followed. My mother taught me all the things a good girl should know, and by the age of 18, I had learned all the homemaking skills. Meanwhile, I used to think that I was a woman and that someday I would marry a man. But when I thought about reality, I felt disappointed. Academically, I was very bright and had completed my master's degree with flying colors. Based on that, I got a job as a lecturer in a small college. Near our village. I never mixed up with anyone, and our house was situated in the middle of a field that my father owned, so we had no neighbors. Two years ago, my mother passed away, and after that, I was totally lonely. I started living like a woman full-time whenever I was at home, and due to my mother's training, I had picked up all the mannerisms of a woman. Due to this, sometimes, even in male form, I used to act like a woman. Even my colleagues and students used to tease me, and the leader of these students was Rajesh, the son of the wealthy Jaminda of our village. He was three years younger than me, but he had failed his exams many times and was a spoiled brat. His father was the wealthiest person in our village, and he used to tease me more than anyone else. Anyone else, calling me names and making fun of my feminine appearance. It was very difficult for me to deal with his constant bullying, but I had no other choice but to endure it as I needed the job. One day, during a lecture, Rajesh made a particularly nasty comment about my appearance in front of the entire class. I was embarrassed and upset. But I tried to continue with my lecture. However, a few moments later, Rajesh suddenly collapsed on the ground, clutching his chest in pain. I immediately called for help and Rajesh was rushed to the hospital. Later, I found out that he had a serious heart condition and was in critical condition. Despite his past behavior towards me, I couldn't help but feel worried for him. After a few days, Rajesh's father came to visit him in the hospital. He was a stern man with a no-nonsense attitude, but when he saw how worried I was about Rajesh, he softened towards me. Over the next few weeks, I continued to visit Rajesh in the hospital and help take care of him. As he slowly recovered, he began to see me in a different light. He apologized for his past behavior and we started to form a bond. As the semester progressed, I noticed that Rajesh started to behave differently around me. He no longer made fun of me or teased me like he used to. Instead, he would always sit in the front row during my lectures and ask thoughtful questions. One day, Rajesh stayed after class and asked to speak with me privately. I agreed and he revealed to me that he had feelings for me. At first, I was taken aback. I had never considered the possibility of being in a romantic relationship with a student, let alone someone who used to tease me so relentlessly. But as Rajesh continued to talk, I started to see him in a different light. 
He was no longer the spoiled brat who used to bully me, but a young man who was earnestly expressing his feelings. He said that he was drawn to me because of my intelligence and kindness, and that he admired the way I carried myself with grace and poise. Over time, Rajesh and I grew closer. We would spend time together outside of class, going on walks and having deep conversations about life and our aspirations. Despite the age difference and the taboo nature of our relationship, we found solace in each other's company. Eventually, Rajesh proposed to me and I said yes. We knew that our families and the society would not approve of our union, but we were willing to face the consequences. We had found love in each other, and nothing else mattered. On our wedding day, Rajesh's family boycotted the ceremony, but my father, who had been distant for years, showed up. He was shocked to see me in a bridal sari, with long hair and makeup. But he looked at me with a sense of pride and acceptance that I had never seen before. It was finally the day that Sunil and Rajesh were going to tie the knot and become life partners. The entire house was filled with a buzz of excitement as everyone was busy preparing for the wedding ceremony. Sunil and Rajesh had decided to have a traditional Indian wedding, which meant that there was a lot of work to be done. Sunil's father had hired a wedding planner who was coordinating everything. The first step was to decorate the house, and the wedding planner had brought in a team of decorators who were putting up flowers and lighting. The house was filled with the aroma of fresh flowers, and it looked like a fairy tale come true. The kitchen was busy preparing the wedding feast. The menu consisted of a variety of dishes, including biryani, dal makhni, butter chicken, and a host of other delicacies. The wedding planner had hired a team of chefs who were working tirelessly to ensure that everything was perfect. Meanwhile, Sunil and Rajesh were getting ready in their respective rooms. Sunil was wearing a beautiful red sari, and Rajesh was dressed in a traditional shirwani. They were both feeling nervous and excited at the same time. They couldn't wait to start their new life together. As the guests started to arrive, the atmosphere became even more festive. The women were dressed in beautiful saris and lahingas, while the men were wearing traditional kurtas and pajamas. The house was buzzing with excitement, and everyone was eagerly waiting for the wedding ceremony to begin. Finally, the time had come for the ceremony to start. Sunil and Rajesh took their places on the stage, and the priest began reciting the wedding vows. The couple exchanged garlands, and then the priest asked them to exchange rings. They slipped the rings onto each other's fingers, and the guests erupted into cheers. After the ceremony, the couple and their families posed for pictures, and then the guests started to enjoy the feast. The food was delicious, and everyone was having a great time. The DJ started playing music, and people started dancing. As the night wore on, Sunil and Rajesh sat together, taking in the moment. They were both so happy that they had found each other, and they couldn't wait to start their life together. They had faced so many challenges, but they had overcome them all, and now they were ready to face the world. Together, years have passed since then, and Rajesh and I have built a life together. We have faced many challenges along the way, but we have never regretted our decision to be together. Sometimes, I look back at my journey from being a feminine guy to becoming the wife of my former student, and I marvel at the unexpected twists and turns that life can take.